Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Genshin Impact playthrough session. We are continuing part two of my act one playthrough of the Sumeru Archon quest. Overall, Sumeru and my enjoyment of this region so far has been great, both on stream and off stream. And I just wanted to give you guys some context as to the progress that I've made off stream between the last stream and this one. So we are in the Avidia Forest region. This is the only area that I've continued to unlock. As you can see, exploration progress, 90%. So I have no videos, no guides, no nothing. I've organically gone through the region. I've marked points of interest on the map, both NPCs, areas that I've got in Dendroculus, areas that I feel like I'm gonna have to go back to for world quests. I found a couple of withering zones off stream that I tackled. And I've generally just done a lot of exploration, finding chests, finding those little uh, investigation stone structures. And that's what's brought me to level 90 as of right now. We are gonna be continuing on going to Port Ormos, which is gonna bleed into this area area like fully actually going all the way down to the bottom here and uh yeah so generally i've just been exploring and enjoying a lot of the exploration that i've done felt like it was natural to do that because this area is relatively the same no matter where you go but it's some of the outskirting areas like i saw like the little mushroom forest in the distance and like there's like a water tower pillar thing in the distance of one of these areas i saw like a deeper part of the withering zone as well from some of the landscape areas that you can see at higher vantage points so those areas i have not explored yet and eventually we'll be able to get through that both with the Archon quest and the Aranara world quest. So at least for right now, we're going to be continuing on with Port Ormos. Before we actually jump into anything else, really quick, just want to showcase. So a couple things. Number one, I got one of my first name cards, completed all of the co-op boss achievements in Sumeru thus far. We fought the Thunder Manifestation, Hydro uh, Hypostasis, Gold Rift Lord, Ruin Serpent, and then the mod. The mods did everything else when they were on my account, as well as like the weekly bosses that I did. So the first name card we got is faded encounter one day our encounter at this moment shall shine like a star reminiscent in our hearts low-key that kind of reminds me of like aether and lumine second i showcased this a little while ago both kali and tignari are both friendship level 10 we managed to get them both to friendship 10 really happy about that as you guys know i have every character friendship 10 thus far so we got tignari's here which is dew kissed tignari dew kissed tignari takes good care of his big fluffy tail the essential oil he uses was extracted from flowers and mixed together meticulously it gives off a faint calming scent interesting so he doesn't have to worry about when it rains apparently and then of course we have Kali, my daughter good virtue it, it's Colin amber this has nothing to do with me and amber leave me alone i'm actually gonna equip Kali's name card for a little bit so i got three new name cards i think i can actually get another one in the academia if i collect all of the books and uh that will give me this one the roaming name card dory comes out next week i'll eventually be able to get this one and then these are a mix between reputations and uh like the general achievements for 100 percenting the region so we'll get those eventually we are making our way into the sumeru academia very excited to be galaxy brain big brain oh this is so so we did see this i think we saw this room in the trailer actually hey tignari you're in the academia the place that you don't want to be at right now oh so the wait are these different rooms hold on let me see oh okay so these are different pathways that lead up to the academia all right so i took the main pathway and okay you can go higher you can go lower okay so this is like the inner area so these are all of the galaxy big brain there's a researcher here oh i can't wait to talk to these people we're actually just regular plebeian boomer men and women who have no idea what the fuck we're doing and we basically usurped our archon in the process so i just wonder if that's gonna be a a, a factor at all moving forward yo what oh there's another chest. So let's open it. 158,000 Mora. Yo, let's go. We take those. Oh my God, another chest. Bruh, I'm making out like, yo, Tignari, you should have joined the academia sooner. He's like, you know what? I'm going to take all their riches and I'm still not going to join these fucks. Holy moly. Wait, are these doors? Okay, no, these are all windows. So they all have like a different symbol on them. I wonder if this rep So see, this one has like the star. This is that the moon and the stars? This might be a Darshan representing. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but that one's like the, 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 the constellation one. This one looks like a, looks like a lion's head. Maybe that's a peacock. Yeah. So I wonder if this represents the six Darshan. Interesting. That's that one kind of looks like uh, an hourglass a little bit. I don't know about that one. That looks like a dragon, kind of? Like a winged creature. Yeah, like a griffin or an eagle. That, that looks like a winged creature. I'm pretty sure we'll find out more as time goes on. It's a really nice looking place though. Wait, what the hell? Oh, the house of Dana. 
What the hell is this? Is this like the library? Holy fuck. Alicia saw this library and she's like, you know what? I'd rather be a librarian for Mondstadt. Their library books are, their library is a lot smaller than ours. Sheesh, dude. Imagine we had to read all of these in-game books. I would literally just like quit my job. Actually, speaking of which, we have to look for some books here. So this actually, yo, say less, say less. The Tale of Shiruya and Shirin. Shirin, hold on. There's an NPC I met with that name. Yeah, there's a Shirin NPC in Gadarv. Ville. I literally marked it right here. Is that a, like a book about them? Hmm, that'd be kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to collect all these books. The Lay of All Hamar, Folio of Foliage, and the Scroll of Streaming Song. All right, I guess I have to collect all the different number of books. Oh my God, there's so many. All right, so I'm just going to run around this inner circle and collect all the books. Oh, an ode to soul. Oh, it's a letter. Lore reportedly passed down. Yo, lore? Pause champ? W wait, what did that say? Lore reportedly passed down within a lost religion religious group in the desert. Someone has inscribed it into a script. Holy shit. Lord of Wisdom, River of Sorrow. Holy moly. Holy shit. Big lore. Oh my God. All right, we got to get into all of that eventually. I'm just trying to grab all these books so I can get that. Ooh, hold on. The Shepherd and the Magic Bottle. All right, I'm like walking all over these fucking tables, straight disrespecting these people and their knowledge. All right, so that's the inner circle. I, I'm pretty sure the rest of the books are on the outer circle here. Oh, there it is. I'm looking for the little shimmer. All right, here it is. Let's go, Ferris Journey. Another name, bro, we got, what, what do we get? Four name cards today? Oh uh, yeah, I see another one. There you are. Bright as the flame. That's two down, one to go. Oh no, right here, right here. All right, we found it, last one. Let's go, Reminiscence of Gurabad. And that should give us the name card. Every journey and memory is a unique miracle that only belongs to the traveler. With all that out of the way, let us continue with the R conquest. Okay, so we're gonna have to cut through this village here. I did do a little bit of exploring in this village, as you guys can see from the amount of pings on my map. I marked a lot of the NPCs here that I'll eventually have to come back and talk to. But this is a cool little environment as well. We have to cut through here though to get to the port. Can I bring my boat through here? It's not too shallow, is it? Hold on, we'll take this scenic route. What just happened? Did Koseki Maru just fucking kill me? My stamina! I thought the boat, like, killed me somehow. Bro, you're kidding. I literally thought I had to push the button and get in the boat. That's some bullshit. I was literally in the boat. That makes no sense. My dead corpse is now chilling within Koseki Maru's company. I'm so mad. Anyways, welcome to, welcome to Sumeru, Koseki Maru. I can't believe I fucking died after I already got in the boat like that's some bullshit oh my god this environment is so nice looking hey aranara we'll come back for you later because i know you guys are big scared of me we got some fishing spots over here too yeah so i did like i said earlier i did like skim through this village here i won't be able to explore it now obviously but i marked where all of the npcs are at least the ones that i could find for later and here is the waypoint y'all were talking about so i'm just gonna do this right now and we'll have that for later points of interest to stop my travels and collect as much as i can <laughs> Huh. Propagate! Huh. Oz, but allow me! Huh. God. Huh. I summon the- Nice! Good shit. Don't know how well this is gonna do in terms of us getting through this Ark Conquest in one stream if I'm gonna be stopping every two seconds like this, but it is what it is. Thing is, though, I want to be able to collect all this stuff along the way because a part of me feels like I'll forget where this stuff is if I don't. Oh, there's the, there's the gate. This is the gate that we saw in the trailer as well. Oh, fuck, a ruin guard. What's going on, my dude? Long time no see. I'll be back pretty soon. Also, hold on, let me grab these while I'm here. Let me just grab this. Statue of the Seven. Uh, I'm not gonna activate this Statue of the seven until I 100% a video for it. Uh, well, if I can't 100% a video for it till I do the world quest, it really doesn't make sense not to. You know what? Yeah, we'll do that. Let's go to the statue of the seven. I'll be back. We're going to take a slight detour chat. Ooh, this is good music too. Got some string instruments in there. You love to hear it. Oh, oh my God. <gasps> It's the 
giant fucking gigalord fucking ruin guard. Yo, that's his dad. Yo, ruin guard, your dad's here. Big chillin'. Oh my god, that's fucking ginormous up close. That is wild, my dude. Dude, that literally looks like a fucking giga ruin guard. Like on some like Pacific Rim type shit. Oh my god, the whole family's here. We got a ruin guard, a ruin grader, a ruin daddy. Bro, imagine Tooster saw this shit. He'd be like, big brother, I want that. I want you to bring that home for me. Holy shit. Dude. Oh, and you can see it on the map too. That's sick. There it is. Port Ormos at the bottom. Wow. You can actually see, like it's arm. It's literally in, it's like encased into the mountain. Also, how many do I need to level up? Okay. I'm, I need 20. I have 15. Oh boy. We're going to have to come back to that later. Holy moly. Look at this. You can hear like the fucking pit. Dude, I'm about to get tetanus right now. Jesus Christ. This thing's rusty AF. Oh, it's got a it's got a Dendroculus in its hand. I honestly wonder if this is a this looks very Conria to me, based on it looking like a ruin guard. You missed the spin crystal? Oh, there it is. Holy shit. I literally just went over it. Okay, we got it. Let's go. Spin crystal number 76. I feel like this thing's gonna be a big part of the story later for some reason. I just feel like it's gonna be like a Deus Ex Machina type thing where we're gonna have to like pilot this thing or fight this thing. One or the other. And we have like abyss mages down there, so I assume it's because of some like abyss order fuckery i love the pitter patter of the like the the freaking hold on the wind knows me. come on grab that thank you thank you let's go oh my god dude it's got its animals here too wait that's the flying one isn't it dude there's ruins all around this thing ruin graders ruin guards ruin drakes all right hold on give me a second i literally have uh-oh never mind I'm, I'm going into this fight one with the forest i have not seen This thing's got a fucking machine gun and a fucking hellfire missiles. Conria, y'all motherfuckers were next level. Why are you making this shit? Like, what is this? All right, so it's got fucking hellfire missiles. It's got atomic, like, dropping bombs, machine guns. They were really trying to fight the gods, bro. Hold the line. I hear everything. There's one with wind and cloud. Wind strider. And there you go. Jesus Christ, dude. They were like, let's drop our entire artillery arsenal on the gods. And the gods were like, bitch, we got to you first. I think we saw in the trailer that we were actually inside of one of these or inside of this later, if that's what it was. So we'll probably end up coming back here. I want to fight this one too, actually. Oh, that's probably a that lost energy block. Wait, what? Okay. Um... Oh my fucking god, dude. I can't. I have to get back to the Archon quest. I'm getting derailed I'm so the hard right now. There it is, chat. There it is. So I think these are based on Vishaps. But Vishaps are also based on the dragons. So basically, they're trying to like create dragons. I'll uproot you. One with the forest. As you wish, main Foylein. I follow the wind. Get wrecked, my guy. God, this thing looks so... These are probably my favorite looking ruin guards out of like all the ones I've seen thus far. Like, I liked the humanoid ones, but then they were like, yo, dragons. And I'm like, bro, I'm there. Port Ormos is right over there, dude. We're super close. I promise. Another ruin guard. Port Ormos. Oh, there's the fishing lady over here too. Base. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, not gonna lie, the first thing I thought of was Donkey Kong. I don't know if that's, uh, if anyone else thought that too. This literally reminds me of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong music's bass, by the way. That's not an insult at all. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good track. Holy shit, this is great. Okay, it's already catchy. I already like it. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, and it gets better. Oh my god. Yeah, 
they really went above and beyond with the music. This area looks incredible. Unlike, super unique, unlike anything. Even like Liyue, it's just so... Guys, this music is getting a little too crazy. Port Ormos, absolutely based music. Oh, this place looks incredible. Look at this, man. It's I love how like the buildings and stuff are in, like ingrained or embedded with natural fauna, like the trees and the vines and shit. Dude, this looks so fucking cool. We have arrived at Port Ormos. I tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. Oh, were they sent by the academia to find the, uh, the knowledge capsule? Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about the Scarlet King and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? Okay, so these motherfuckers want to bring back their desert king. So I guess they want to resurrect the desert god because uh, they're like, yo, Sumeru's got no general leader. You know, lesser Lord Kusanali barely doesn't exist. Oh, you can see the, the, the symbol on their head that represents their Darshan. That's cool. The winged thing that we saw in the library. They're called Ein El Akmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Okay, so I have to remember, because yeah, because they're all wearing the same colors, color robes, but they're wearing different crests. So I guess the crests signify what, what, what house they're in or what Darshan they're in. So I'm gonna write that down. But like, I thought it was also based on the color of the robe. I thought the color of the robe told you what house you're in, but maybe because these guys are like uniform, uniformly together, it's like give them the same outfit, but change, make like distinguish what house they're in based on their crests. Maybe the robes are their rank. I see. Oh, that would make sense then. All right, so I have to figure out what the rank of the robes are then. Are these student robes? Yeah, they are students. So these could be student robes. And then like the higher up robes are maybe based on like what Darshan you graduated in. Yeah, uh, okay. That makes a lot more sense now. I've heard that Ein El Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, They'll give you info on anything. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We were just talking about students in robes and houses, and this guy has glasses. He reminds me of Harry Potter. Just saying. Do you really think that Ein El Akmar group can give us reliable info about what we're after? We should discuss things thoroughly before we make any moves. Oh my God, the music is so fucking good. They're like different renditions of the same music, but with different instruments. This is so fucking... I'm so impressed. Bro, I don't know how that, like... Bro, they still have Fontaine, Natlin, Shneznaya, Conria, Celestia. Like, this music is going to just fucking destroy me by the end. I'm just gonna be like, bro, you know what? I just want to listen to music. I don't even want to play the game anymore. Oh my gosh, this is really good. Ooh, a chest! Yo, Poggers! Let's go! Is Precious chest! Any? Right on that big ship right there. If you guys haven't gotten it, go get it. Ah, so we did see this backside area in the trailer. Yeah, that building right there. We saw this area in the trailer, in one of the trailers. This is the place we heard those students talking about. All right, where are we at? Let's find a seat somewhere and see if we can spot the group they mentioned. All right, here we go. You sit down and wait for some, and wait for some time. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. Paimon, you look super suspicious just floating like that. So, they think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss? Ha! <laughs> Once we reclaim the power of the Scarlet King, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time. So we mustn't underestimate them. Member of Ein al Ahmar. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. All these guys talk about is the Scarlet King, so they're probably the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata, that traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when the Scarlet King exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. Greater Lord Ruka Devada, a traitor? Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. So, uh, some conflict with the gods, maybe? Desert God, the Archon, and the Flower Goddess. Let's see, get some information. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? I'm a student from the Academia. A student? Huh. <laughs> 
What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? I heard you guys have good vibes down here. I'm looking for info about a certain something. Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Hand him 500. Yo, you know what? Keep the change. Oh, Paimon can't stand to see so much more ago. But there's no other choice right now. Paimon, you didn't even earn my money. This is my hard-earned money. Stay in your lane. This is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? You know what's really funny? About half of the money I just gave him, I stole from the academia in that one chest. So, you know what? They had it coming. Oh, that's right. We heard you mention the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh... Archaeology students! <laughs> <sighs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. Okay. And Celestia was like, not today, sir. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom. Uh, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. This reminds me of Havria, like how some people believe that she was slaughtered by Morax. And then like, it's like, hey, well, that's the truth and I'm sticking to it. And then Zhongli was like, I got to hit you with the truth now. I'm pretty sure there's more to it than just that. So... You mean the traitor was- Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization. Damn. And our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Okay, they're salty. Furthermore, she conspired with the academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our God shall return. Mm. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true God will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. The Scarlet King is returning. Can you tell me more about the Oracle? I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Oh shit. How do you know that, sir? <sighs> you again? T deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Oh, this guy looks so fucking sick. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Okay, I thought he was calling me out. I was like, oh shit, I just got ahead. But he's saying the other guy that I just gave money to is the fraud. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more you're worth. Damn, dude, 17 mil. Hey, shut it all, Haytham. What are you playing at, trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? Oh, I'll hate them. I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Mmm, I wonder who their boss is now. The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you. Don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. <laughs> After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tevat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. Sheesh. I will jeopardize the Aramite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, <laughs> I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, 
he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay then, if you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Sir, I don't know if you want to do that. He's a five-star character. You're just a, an NPC with, like, new clothes and different shading. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Let's go! Hell yeah, dude. And we got all that information for free. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, <sighs> Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Uh, duh. Well, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. This guy's like, he's like walking around like he owns the place. Whoa, did you see that? only got us our Mora back, but sent the Emirates running too. Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions. He went that way, after him. Okay, Paimon. Wait up. It's Al Haytham, right? Thank you for the help back there. No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your Mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. All right. Goodbye. Hold your horses. We still have something to ask you about. The Divine Knowledge Capsule. Yeah, he's from the Academia too, apparently. He doesn't look it. Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem. <clears throat> certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? I'm a student from the Academia. Oh, yeah. He's gonna be like, actually, no, I'm from the Academia, and I've never seen you there a day in my life. But he also doesn't look like he's from the Academia. Neither of us do. We're not even wearing robes or reading books. A student. <laughs> right. Look, <laughs> you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Perhaps we can all talk terms? Huh? Oh, yeah. He's really strong. Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. He doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Yo, flex on him right now with all four elements. Do it to him. Maybe not, but he can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I, uh, oh, boy. Um, from guys like that. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Negotiator Paimon. All right, I accept. Paimon did Got something. A paper. If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? Divine Knowledge Capsule. You were willing to part with 500,000 Mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? Yep. Okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know connected to the academia somehow and that not only do the Aramites deal in it but some students want to get a hold of it too you know almost everything there is to know but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before this is what you've been looking for wait he has it huh? I mind can't tell what it is what the hell it looks like some kind of ornament this is a knowledge capsule to put it simply it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. It's not like anything you want to know, it's whatever it knows. So it's almost like forbidden knowledge then it seems. Anyone? Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, 
Knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. Yeah, it's like a flash drive. That's amazing. <laughs> Damn Paimon. It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. So why do they why does the academia have it then? They're breaking their own law. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. Ah, that's why, so it wasn't destroyed. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Bro, I swear to God, there's like a recorded knowledge of like knowledge that nobody should know. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. I heard that the academia lost something recently. Seems like it's a knowledge capsule. Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Maybe their knowledge that they're hiding might have something to do with what they've done to their Archon and how they're hiding her away. And if that knowledge gets out to the public, then that could be an issue for them. What do I have to do? <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. Uh, what is it? I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Let's go! We're gonna see Dory, Pog. She comes out next week. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. She's guarded against people from the academia because most of her wares don't comply with academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. <laughs> I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. Mm. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. Yeah, Paimon, shut it. <sighs> Fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. This is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. We only just saw a knowledge capsule for the first time. We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Yeah, it's the most useless mechanic in the game. Oh, that's a surprise. I know. Guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. It's crazy. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me. Can you detect any difference in their quality? Bro, how do you just have these lying around, my guy? Um, they look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with Elemental Sight. Are they really fucking giving us an Elemental Sight tutorial? <laughs> oh, well, that one's radiating Let's energy. Go. Did you see anything? It's the left one. The one on the left shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. That's because knowledge originates from Ermansoul, the root of dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in dendro energy. However, some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. And be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? Mahamatra? Yo, Sino? They belong to the academia's regulatory body. 
they also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the academia has banned both their trade and possession. No wonder Sino and Al Haytham were fighting in that teaser. He's literally like the bad boy vigilante doing forbidden stuff with legal equipment. And then you have Sino, who's like the big fucking police of the region. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. Mm. If you two want to back out, now's the time. I'm willing to take the risk. Okay. Then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikella Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. The quest is currently involved. Wait, what? The quest location is currently involved with another quest. Unappreciated carving. Oh dear. I just have to start the event. I don't have to do the whole thing. All right, let's do this. I'm so surprised they haven't found a way to like override that with whatever you're currently doing. Like maybe we'll eventually come here and then it'll interfere. So just got to get this out of the way. What Ormos is pretty great. There's so many new and interesting things. Not to mention all the tasty food. So this is the Kali event that I just have to start so I can go back to the other one. Sumeru's largest commercial port sure lives up to its name. Look at all the merchants. <laughs> and everyone seems excited just to be here. No one's quite as excited as Paimon. Uh, how did things end up like this? All thanks to your artistic license. That's how. Uh, I should have made you wait until we got an update from Tanja. <sighs> But when I finished the prototype R&R yesterday, you agreed that the kids would like it. That's why we tried bringing it out for a test run today. Wait, are they making like little r and R toys for the kids? Like the little forest spirits. Well, I never thought they'd dislike it so much. I see it right there. Okay, that looks hideous. Oh my God, that looks like an abomination. Whoa, yeah. Compared to everyone else, they seem really down in the dumps. Let's go find out what's going on. They should also sell the r and r plushies in real life. Hey there. Paimon's name is Paimon, and he's a traveler who is just passing by. Is there something bothering you? Oh, I noticed you two a moment ago. Welcome to Akara Crafts, the best toy store in Port Ormos. Uh, at least for now. Uh, what's bothering us is this prototype r and uh, To start with... Could I, uh, get your opinion on it? It's bad. Prototype Aranara? Uh, you mean this wood carving here? It looks like a mushroom monster to Paimon. Uh, oh, there we have it. The verdict is in. Uh, what a headache. Not the first negative feedback we've had. So, what exactly is a prototype Aranara? So, for context... Aranara are magical creatures in Sumeru fairy tales that live in the forest. For the store's 20th anniversary, we plan to release a series of hand-carved toys based on the Aranara stories that kids know and love. This is a prototype we made to get an idea of how they would react when we put it out there. The reaction was... not quite what we'd anticipated. They thought it looked like a mushroom too, huh? No. Worse than that, actually. I can't quite describe it, though. And I'm also not very good with kids. Maybe you could ask them for yourselves. This is not an Aranara. <laughs> no way. I've read Uncle Tanja's Aranara and the Ill Little Fungus. It says that Aranara are supposed to be chubby and squishy. The carving looks nothing like that. Boys do look better when they're round and chubby. Uncle Tanja said in Aranara's vow that you can deceive the eyes, but you can't deceive the heart. This carving makes me feel lost and confused inside. <laughs> I don't think the creator put his heart into it at all. It's nothing like an r, &R. Damn, this fucking r, r gave me an existential crisis. Ooh, didn't put his heart into it, huh? Jesus Christ. Oh, sounds like one of those things that's easier said than understood. The seed and Alia didn't like this carving, but I think it's okay. Aw, that's nice of you. It doesn't look too happy, so <laughs> it's kind of pitiful in a cute way. Oh, a positive review. Yeah, so I would totally ask my dad to get it for me. If it wasn't meant to be a Nara Nara. Oh, well, that took a sudden turn for the worse. We asked the children for their opinions. Damn, children's opinions are rough out here, dude. They're like savages compared. Like, they're just like, I don't care who this hurts. Your little prototype made me question my life existence. Oh, 
How did it go? Uh, has it maybe, uh, grown on them at all? Unfortunately, no. Oh, this is such a shame. Uh, why isn't Tonjer back from Gondarvaville yet? Oh, Ooh. the kids kept mentioning an Uncle Tonjer too. Who is he exactly? Uncle Tonjer is a famous children's author here in Port Ormos. He wrote quite a few stories in the past, but uh, none of them were popular among children. Uh, just like our prototype Haranara. But around a year or so ago, he suddenly had a eureka moment or something. And suddenly, the children loved every one of his stories. He probably saw an actual Aranara. That's right. My little Gafari loves his stories, too. The whole reason we decided to make these carvings was because we saw just how popular the Aranara are among children. This track is so good. I really like this track. We asked Tanja for guidance. Right after he agreed, he went off to Gondarvaville with his son to look for inspiration. They haven't returned yet. We were running out of time, so we had no choice but to carve an Aranara based on our own imaginations. As you can see, this was the result. Damn, that's your imagination? Sorry to see that. Oh, we have to do something. Hey, since you're the famous traveler, could you do us a favor and look for Tondra in Gundarvaville? In before we get that prototype as a furnishing in our teapot. Uh, he doesn't have to come in person if he's too busy. Just ask him to write down his suggestions and bring his notes back to us, uh, if you could. Please, if only to put a smile on the children's faces. Uh, and, of course, you'll be well compensated for doing us the favor. They seem pretty desperate. Hmm. Let's help them out to see the kids smile. And also for our reward. <laughs> Is it cleared up now? There we go. Now we're cleared up. Now we can do... Oh my god, I got like stuck on that. Now we can do the quest. Pog. Here, over here. You can stop running now. Ooh, I like her voice. I didn't know that was her talking. So you were the one who was calling out to us just now. But, uh... Are we definitely going to be safe here? These two good customers wish to buy some horror fruit, Miss Dory. And if there's nothing else, I'll just excuse myself. Oh, very good. Thank you. She has such a cool looking design. Like the colors really match well. Like this, this is literally the exact same color scheme as Diona. So, I mean, the colors just work. Huh? Wait, you're Dory? Paimon sure thought you'd look a whole lot scarier. Hey, what are you trying to say, Princess Peabrain? I can be scary enough when I need to be, believe you me. If you don't watch what you say, then you can forget about doing any business. Damn, Princess Peabrain. That's a new name. But it seems you two have actually done pretty well so far. Not only did you manage to find the informant, your reactions were also pretty sharp. You don't really look like criminals or anything. But I bet my Mora that you've been involved in some shady dealings, haven't you? Uh, you caught me. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a compliment, but we'll take it. I can't risk doing business with people who start huffing and puffing after just a few paces. No matter how much Mora they might have. Not only will they get caught by the Matra, but they'll also get us into trouble. As decent folks trying to run an honest business. We don't need any of that. Wouldn't you agree? Honest business. So that's why I prefer to have customers like you. It's your first time here, but don't worry. I won't ask too many questions. Even if you wish to buy enough knowledge capsules to decorate your house with, please knock yourself out. As long as you have lots of round, shiny Mora, then we're all good. Can you show me your products? Ah, yes, of course, of course. Go ahead. Help yourselves. Voila! What kind of products do you seek, my dear customers? Uh, don't worry, I'm not interested in your reasons for buying. I can, however, offer some suggestions. All right, Dory's about to scam us right now. We got to use Elemental Sight Traveler. Take this one, for example. An analysis of the sociological ideology and dialectics of the Hillicherals. Only three people in all of Tevat have ever studied it, Ooh. making it extremely rare. It's on sale now for 350,000 Mora. I know Ella Musk, though. That's basically her. So, like, I already have one of those, pretty much. <laughs> I'll pass. Who would want to be an expert in that topic? Damn! Paimon, what the fuck? We know someone who does that. How 
about the architectural styles and construction methods up to that in the early Archon War period. I feel like Zhang Li would know that one. With this one, you can become an expert in historic architecture preservation and find an excellent, well-paying job in nearly any nation. Ooh, now this sounds like it could be useful. To, to us? Why? Why would I want to know about the architecture of what happened like 2,600 years ago? Of course, you are free to pick whatever your hearts desire. The contents and price of each knowledge capsule are indicated in small text on the body of each one down at the bottom. Elemental site. Ooh, the three in the middle. I'll take this one. And this one. And this one. Okay, we're going to take the three. Gotcha. Bro, we're broke now. Ah, you've really got a good head on your shoulders. And quite the eye for quality. Oh, listen, I have a special offer for you two. If you spend just 100,000 more and more... You can pick any knowledge capsule of your choice up to a value of one million, Mora. But, like, the other ones aren't really worth. They don't even radiate that much. Say what now? Did you hear that? Spend another 100k and we get a capsule worth a whole million. But there's no other ones. Simon, calm down. Don't let her trick you into spending more. See, that's what Alt Hytham said. She's like, she'll literally just fucking gobble you up and take all your money. What? All the canned knowledge we just bought is easily worth half a million Mora. If we spend just a little more... Damn. We can get something worth one million, Mora. Isn't that a fantastic deal? Paimon just outed herself. Clearly not financially responsible. Come on, come on. We still have around 100,000 of Alhatham's Mora left. <laughs> so let's put it to good use by finding something useful for you. Ahem, you've got a deal, Dory. We'd like to spend an extra 100,000 Mora. They're not letting Paimon make this decision for me right now. They didn't really just say, fuck you, main character. You have no agency in our game. What the fuck? Why Why did you even bother with all that if you were just going to let her do it anyway? Excellent. Bruh. Please select from this fine collection of canned knowledge over here. This story has nothing to do with Aether. This story has everything to do with Paimon. Oh! Hold on a second. Paimon thought we could choose whatever we wanted. Why can't we choose the ones from over there? Because she never explained it. Also, have fun using your elemental site since you wanted to make this deal for us. Oh, but my dear customer, the knowledge capsules over here are worth <coughs> one million more each. I'm sure discerning customers like yourselves will be able to find something to your liking. Damn. Please, take your time. Uh oh Paimon has a bad feeling about this. Oh! Let's use Elemental Sight again to check these. What do you mean, let's? Why don't you use Elemental Sight? You're the one who has the money, right? We're getting a capsule worth a million mora here. Don't be such a party pooper. Let Paimon take a look here. An introduction to traditional Sumeru brewing techniques. The art of growing spices. An overview of ancient runes. Oh, how about this one? Sword fighting techniques eight. I'm already a good fighter. Not sure we'd ever find volumes one through seven, <laughs> but at least this knowledge should be useful, right? Let's go with this one. Oh my God. You ever just take a class like, sign me up for a Portuguese language class in the fourth level and I'll just skip the first three. What's the worst that could happen? All right, very good. I'm expecting some new goods in the next couple days. So be sure to check back again soon, whether it's canned knowledge or anything else you need. Bring your Mora to Dory and doors will open. Our dealings with Dory went smoothly enough. Let's head to Wakala Funduk and meet up with Alhatham. Hopefully now he'll finally tell us about what the Academia lost. All right, let me at least see what the... That's actually kind of cool. I like how they're filling up these uh, quest items. Canned knowledge. Like, bro, it's literally a five-star fucking item. That's bullshit. It's like a one-star item. Canned knowledge labeled sword fighting technique eight. It was bought from Dory's booth at the price of 100,000 Mora at Paimon's instigation. You have no idea where the first seven in the series are but things like combat techniques will always be useful well probably bruh canned knowledge purchased from dory and the mora given to you by all hytham packaged as common commodities to keep it low-key huh you two made it and from the looks on your faces you were successful whoa there's so many people from the academia here why would you pick this place as our meetup spot well Wikela Funduk is under the Academia's control, so naturally the Academia has people working here. 
I came to Port Ormos under the pretense of conducting official business. I love how you can see his abs through his shirt. Like, relax there, Hoyoverse. Jesus. You're a pretty daring guy. Relax. No one here is interested in anything we say, and the Macher won't come here. <sighs> okay, now. Tell me how your encounter with Dory went. Get what you ask. So, can you tell us about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost now? Before that, I have to ask. Why are you two so intent on tracking it down? You don't have to answer, of course. We want to meet with the Dendro Archon. Yeah, he just wants to meet the God of Wisdom and ask her about something important. We've been in Sumeru for a while now, but we still haven't found a way. When we heard that the Academia had lost something that might be related to the gods, we came here in case it turned out to be our lucky break. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'll give you the thing you lost in exchange for an audience with the Dendra Archon. In that case, you're on the right track. A short while ago, the Academia lost a knowledge capsule in the desert. It's supposedly a divine knowledge capsule. Use it, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. Interesting. Wow, there's really such a thing as that? Hey, if we find it, do you think we could learn how to meet the Dendro Archon? Ooh, or how to find your sister? But it's canned knowledge, so it won't tell us anything outside of what's in it. I highly doubt it has any mystical properties, but it does indeed exist. And it's right here, in Port Ormos. They're talking about the desert, which is definitely 3.1 territory, too. So, where exactly? That's what we need to find out next. Your goal is to find it, too? I won't deny that. I am investigating because I'm curious as to what the Divine Knowledge Capsule truly is. The Eremites in Port Ormos also have their eyes on it. It is an extremely precious item. The knowledge contained within may bring great power or wealth to whoever has it in their possession. Several brigades have been vying for ownership of it as of late, but there is still no victor. My personal finances and connections cannot compete with those of the Eremites. After attempting various methods, I finally managed to reach a tentative agreement with several brigades. I agreed to forego ownership of the Divine Knowledge Capsule in exchange for the opportunity to study it. After all, there's no harm in understanding what it is. However, there are those who are less amenable to negotiation, such as those from Ayn al-Akhmar. They adamantly believe that the Divine Knowledge Capsule contains the Scarlet King's power, and that he will return to this world when they obtain it. They refuse to let anyone from the Academia tarnish their deity's soul. So you kept hounding them because they refused to cooperate with you? Yes. Ayn al-Akhmar isn't exactly wealthy, but its members are determined to get that capsule by any means necessary. To that end, they've resorted to many methods more foul than fair in order to amass sufficient funds. So, I've been sabotaging their business to force them into negotiating with me. The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Each brigade will place their own bid, and the prize will be covertly given to the winner. To ensure the capsule's security and to evade the Matra's notice, the winning brigade will not publicly disclose their victory. Unless I know whose hands the Divine Knowledge Capsule ends up in, my agreements with them will fall through. Dory is the most reliable source of information, but that avenue was previously closed to me. With you on board now, the situation is different. Very political, this, this Archon quest. A lot of uh, negotiating, diplomacy, like a lot of diplomatic strategizing going on. In other words, you wanted us to befriend Dory so you could find out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Yes, you can say that. But this arrangement harms none of us. The day after tomorrow, go back to Dory and try to purchase information on the Divine Knowledge Capsule's whereabouts. If she has no information, wait two days and approach her again. If I get the opportunity to study the Divine Knowledge Capsule, I will relay my findings to you. Will that suffice as compensation? Yeah, sure. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Then we'll meet up in two days. Um, oh, hey, Thum. Before you go... We actually bought a knowledge capsule for ourselves, but we're not sure how to use it. That's true. Like, we don't even know. We just have it. <laughs> you two want to try using a knowledge capsule? Sure. Oh. I can teach you. Well, you have to, like, use it with your Akasha terminal. Doing so right under the Academia's nose is a bit problematic, though. What do you say we head to the outskirts of town? All right. This place works. Show me the capsule you purchased. Hmm. Sword Fighting Techniques 8. Huh. A combat class knowledge capsule. This class is something of a rare find these days, 
since most have been taken by the Aramites to augment their battle capabilities. Please don't give Paimon credit for this. All right, I can't. Really? Ah, oh, yeah, what a great buy! If you want to determine the efficacy of this capsule, I can evaluate your combat ability. However, effects will likely be minimal if you already possess a high amount of strength. I'm level 90, so you tell me. We can conduct a controlled experiment where you fight two battles. One before using this knowledge capsule, and one after. Wait, am I gonna get like a new ability or some shit? That'd be kind of cool if they just were like, Hey, a permanent mechanic, now that you've done this. While you fight, we can use an Akasha terminal to monitor your various physical parameters. There may be variances in your physical strength between the two tests, as well as a disparity in your opponent's abilities. But don't worry. I'll run statistical analyses afterward to mitigate any confounding effects. Damn, this is like super serious. Wow! Oh, hey, Thumb! You must have been one of those guys at the <laughs> academia who got top grades on everything! Damn, Paimon just was like, you must be a nerd. Paimon's curious about something, though. You definitely weren't one of those students who needed canned knowledge to graduate from the academia, right? So, why are you risking getting caught by the mantra for this capsule? When you are unable to understand a researcher's actions, most cases can be attributed to curiosity. This is but one theory. Sounds like you're trying to avoid the question. It's like, well, stop asking me questions then. All right, let's begin the test. Damn! Just fight as Man, you Man, just do. deflected it so hard. Didn't even acknowledge her right there. All right, so these are my stats right now. Looking pretty good. I assume these are the mobs I'm supposed to fight. <laughs> Can't see. By Royal Duke, hold the line. Scatter! <laughs> Direct. Oh no, reinforcements! Alright, so that was before. Alright, I'll link your Akasha terminal to record data. The next step is to use this knowledge capsule. Hold it in your hand. I'll help you establish a connection with it so you can activate its power. Firmly grasp it in your hand. Firmly grasp it. Open your inventory and use the divine knowledge. Wait, I gotta use a five star item? I don't want it. No! That hurts me so much. You literally just took away the thing I wanted. As if I saw countless sword wielding figures. This is so fucking cool. As if I saw countless sword wielding figures fighting one moment and then in the next, they disappeared into the recesses of my memory. Hey. How are you feeling? I felt something for a moment. Whatever was inside the knowledge capsule became part of my memory. You mean that it worked? All right. Time for round 2. Fight with the same composure as before. Okay. The House of Canned Time. God of Time? I only went up by four attack. Paimon, you fucking idiot! You're so dumb! You literally just wasted all my money for plus four attack. I'm so pissed. I feel the plus four attack coursing through my very body. Now, I'll start recording data again. He's gonna be like, I barely see an improvement. Oh, hey, Thumb. How's it going? Well... The knowledge capsule you purchased did improve his combat capability. <laughs> During the second fight, his overall fighting performance increased by 0.073%. <laughs> Oh my god. When you put it that way, that makes it even worse. Like, plus four attack sounds better than a 0.073% improvement. Thanks a lot, Paimon. Wait, how much? I know, right? <laughs> Us! This thing isn't worth a tenth of that amount! Us. That's cute. Of course, this could be because he is so powerful that the capsule's contents were unable to produce a substantial increase. Yeah, okay, okay, don't butter me up like that. Don't patronize me. At the very least, this test allowed me to gain more insight into you two. Our deal seems increasingly worth my investment. Man's really said, no, it's just that you're more powerful than this capsule can comprehend. You outshine it in every possible way. You're actually, you didn't even need the capsule. I'm heading back to Akela Funduk. I await your response in two days time. This is more of for when you ask Dory for information. Pay her as much as she requests. Is that a permanent plus four boost? You're so generous, Hoyoverse. Holy shit, you just permanently increased my character's stats. Is it actually based on scaling? Like, is it because I'm super high leveled? Still better than artifact farming? Uh-huh. So it appears the can knowledge alone is no longer sufficient for your opulent appetite. Mm -hmm. <sighs> then please oblige me. 
Tell me what you have in mind. Uh, I'd like to buy info on the whereabouts of the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Oh! <laughs> I knew customers with pockets as deep as yours would undoubtedly crave something more profound than ordinary can knowledge. But you know... That kind of information isn't going to be cheap. After all, I had to work really hard to weasel my way into the auction site. Not to mention that if anyone found out that I was the leaker, I would be in big, big trouble. Someone call Hoyoverse. We found the leakers. But how can we be sure your information is accurate? Paimon's curious how you just happen to have this kind of info the moment we need it. Dory is the mascot of leakers. Genshin leakers have to buy her and support her as a character because she fundamentally stands for what y'all stand for in the community. Hoyoverse was so tenhead. They were like, all right, we got leakers in our community. How do we get one up on them? Perfect. Let's make a character that completely embodies what they do to our game and they'll feel completely compelled to buy it they'll just be endlessly missing those guaranteed dories and we'll just make millions off of them and that'll be compensation for all the times that they leak information and ruin the fun stuff and ruin anything that has nothing to do with pre-farming and uh you know we get the last lap easy clap boys <laughs> Because to me, anything of value is what I consider to be my supply. Therefore, I must always be aware of what's hot on the market in order to secure more sales. As for the information's authenticity, well, you've no need to worry about that. I used a camera to take a picture of the transaction. That way, no one can dispute it. It's always a pleasure doing business with such sterling patrons. Bro, I'm never gonna get tired listening to this music. This is so freaking good. <clears throat> Now that you've paid in full, here's the scoop. The Divine Knowledge Capsule was purchased yesterday by a certain Misery, the leader of Ein El Ahmar. Misery, the leader of Ein El Ahmar. Ein El Ahmar? You mean the Aramites who worship the Scarlet King? Ah, so you're already familiar with them. The group has done everything in their power to obtain the Divine Knowledge Capsule. After all, they believe it contains the power of the Scarlet King. Damn, she's scamming them too. She's like, you know what? All of these contain the power of your Scarlet King. And for a price, it could be yours. That Divine Knowledge Capsule is unlike any other can knowledge I've seen before. It was glowing bright red. The capsule is clearly visible in the picture I took. You can look for yourself. It's not green? What the fuck? Thanks for the info, Dory. Please, it's my pleasure. It's all thanks to discerning customers such as yourselves that my efforts yesterday were not in vain. Please, don't hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything else in the future. More for Dory, open stores. Well, we figured out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. It turns out it ended up in the hands of Ein El Ahmar. I'll find you your perfect Let's head back and talk to Al Haytham. And remember to bring a token of our friendship the next time we meet, okay? I like to think it's built on a firm foundation of solid, shining mora. Maybe Paimon can do that. You two seem to be having a budding relationship right now. Oh, hey, Thumb! We got the info you wanted! Really? All right. Let's hear it. Dory even gave us evidence to verify the intel. Have a look. Huh, look at that. Clear as day. It must have taken some guts just to infiltrate the scene of the Aramite's transaction. But then, to get close enough to take a picture like this... Bold move, Dory. Very bold move. All right. The person in this picture is indeed Misery, the leader of Ein al Ahmar. And the glowing red capsule he's holding appears to be the Divine Knowledge capsule. In which case, if we play our cards right, when we confront them next week, we should be able to force them to show their hand. At first, Paimon didn't get why you were provoking these Ein el Ahmar guys. But now, it sort of makes sense. Everything's playing right into your hands. After we defeat them, we can finally have a serious talk with their boss and get them to lend us the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Thank you for your time and efforts. Take a few days off while I make some preparations. Let's meet up again on the afternoon of the arranged date, 3 o'clock sharp. Oh, hey, I'm sure he's taking his time. Where could he be? Oh, there he is. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Let's head to the pier in front of Faro's lighthouse. Yep. Let's go! Yo, this song is so fucking catchy. Hoyoverse, like, actually made a certified banger with this one. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's a really good one. <laughs> Aether loves it so much he skips to it. I'll hate them. I knew you were crazy, but I didn't know you were crazy enough to actually show up. The squad is pulling up. It was I who demanded that these negotiations take place. I was more worried that you might go back on your promise. But to your credit, it appears that you're sticking to your word. This is turning into quite an occasion. I also brought some backup. I assume you don't mind. Bro, two five stars versus five one stars. Backup? Aren't you the brat from the restaurant the other day? Yep. You've come to support this lunatic because he helped you out? <laughs> Fine. Your funeral. Imagine Aether just died and then they're just like, okay, the game's over. I'm not going to mince my words. Once we're done with you, you'll be nothing more than fish food. Get them, boys! Yo, the boys? Uh-oh, here they come. <laughs> uh, good luck, you two. Wow! Really, Paimon? Damn, Paimon really just said... <laughs> Wow. That's close enough. Oh my god. Yo, this man's got a fucking crossbow. It's not that serious, my Scatter. dude. <laughs> Oz, we're being rushed and rebuilt. Damn, I love how they made this tiny ass field. <laughs> You're wrecked, my guy. <laughs> Terminate. Wings of darkness. <laughs> got him. Oh, cutscene. <laughs> Damn. Academia scum. Uh-oh. Boss, finally. Oh. Did you use it? Oh, Great. he used now we the... Can... He used the red capsule. B boss? Oh, what the fuck happened to him then? Oh, hello, boss. Generic NPC. Oh, my God. What the fuck is going on? Boss. Boss. Oh my he god. What happened to him? Dude, he's like brainwashed. We have to cut his Akasha connection. Now. <laughs> Yo, the music? Let's go. Dude, the one hitter quitter. Jesus. Bro! Target acquired. Arrest him. <sighs> Hold on. I think I know what's gonna happen. Do not impede our work. Is that understood, all Hatham? Whoa. Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away. Oh, he just yoinked it! Oh dear. I think I know what's gonna happen. World. Forgive me. Dude, what the fuck? <gasps> what in Tibet just happened? It's like that big guy suddenly lost his mind. Just like in 2.8. So what I think is going to happen is I think Dotore is going to get a divine knowledge capsule like that red one and hook it up to the main Akasha terminal that links to everybody's Akasha system in Teva, like in Sumeru, and everyone's going to go crazy. I think that's what's going to happen because I was like, that, that just happened to one person who has an Akasha system and everyone has an Akasha system in this region. So if they find a way to like make that like brain washing situation happen to everybody at once, that nation would just like implode on itself. I actually think that's what's going to happen. It's crazy because we were just talking about in 2.8, the whole 2.8 thing I felt like was foreshadowing for something like this, where it's like mirages and hallucinations and like basically like situations happening that were affecting the brain. And that's basically what just happened to that guy. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if it can be like, I don't know if you can like correct 
corrupt a Gnosis because it's Gnosis powered, but I don't really know what the Akasha system is or where it is. Uh, there was that one activate thing at the Academia. Maybe the, the main frame of the Akasha system is up there in the Academia, like at the top level with the Sages. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen by the end of the Archon quest. Or at least that's my mind. That's what I think can happen. That's a possibility. It looks like he used the Divine Knowledge Capsule. So like he used it on his own Akasha system, on his own like Akasha terminal. But like what happens if it's forced upon you from everybody at like for everyone that's already using it? You mean the Divine Knowledge Capsule did that to him? It was the red one. And he also mentioned World Forget Me. So it's still rooted in the Ermine Soul. Speaking of which, Hapasia did mention. Oh, yeah. You mean how some researchers go insane after getting knowledge from Ermin Soul? So it won't happen to everybody, but I feel like some people will enough people will be affected to where it'll just will just devolve into chaos. I've heard of numerous incidents of researchers in Satyavada life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. This divine knowledge capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Possessing it doesn't grant you divine wisdom or power. Or maybe it's 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 knowledge that's so beyond human comprehension that it, it just drives you insane. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Move on! Stop remembering Ruka Devada. Y'all are fucking, y'all are literally driving yourselves off the edge. That's exactly what I heard before at Ermensul. If the mantra took him away, then that means the academia got the divine knowledge capsule back too. Ugh, what a shame. We were so close. I'll hype them. Is there anything you want to say? Still, Paimon didn't expect the divine knowledge capsule would be so dangerous. Imagine if we tried to open it. Oh, who knows what would have happened to us? As things stand, there oh. is no reason for me to remain in Port Ormos. How convenient. I believe our collaboration has also reached its end. Okay, well, I clearly this guy isn't telling me everything. Oh, we were so busy trying to find the Divine Knowledge Capsule that Paimon forgot to ask you something. Since you're a member of the Academia... Do you have any idea how we can go about meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali? Truthfully, I don't. Lesser Lord Kusanali appears to exist outside of Sumeru's entire administration. Most of the time, you wouldn't know she exists at all. Almost like she's a figment of your imagination. Moreover, since the Academia possesses the Akasha, a symbol of our deity's wisdom, scholars have no reason to desire to make contact with the deity herself anyway. And about Lesser Lord Kusanali is such a mystery. It's so crazy. It's almost like it feels like she's not real. I'm heading back to the academia. How about you two? Uh, it's almost the day of the Sub Zero's festival. Maybe we should head back too. We've been rushed off our feet over the past few days, so maybe a little rest and relaxation will do us good. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be act two. Then we'll part ways here, I'll hate them. Until we meet again. Yeah, until we meet again, Mr. Shifty. Wait, I have the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Bruh. Now, do I deal with this thing first? Or should I produce the report that the higher-ups require? The higher-ups? The sages? Bro, oh my god. Holy moly. We did it. We finished Act 1. The coming of the Subzerus Festival. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All Haytham, my dude. I wonder if he's, like, similar to, like, what Yelan is. Like, Yelan is, like, basically, like, a covert spy for Ningguang. I wonder if Al Haytham is the same thing for the higher-up sages of the Academia. So he wasn't necessarily, like, not being truthful. But, like, he speaks to a higher power than any of the researchers or anything like that. Based on what he just said there. And, uh, his whole stick is like his whole thing that he was mentioning was he even if he doesn't he just wants to study the um he wants to study the divine knowledge capsule which i guess is fine but that red one it's like what the fuck where did that one come from you know what i mean like it seems like that one was planted in a way and based on whoever told the eremite that or er, that 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 divine knowledge capsule gave them the power of their god or gave them the knowledge of their god basically led that man to do that so again i i don't know if it's dotori 
I don't know if it's the Abyss Order, but I feel like it's it's one of them. God damn. What a great, what an entertaining Archon quest for Act 1. I know we had to, like, cut it up into several parts just because there's just a lot to take in, especially for this, like, sequence of Port Ormos and, like, making our way down here and everything was great. I still am very, very, very excited to go back and explore this entire bottom region area. We're 13% through, so we have a ways to go, but, you know, we have this giant ruin machine, which I'm assuming this is going to play a role in the world quest lore of the place, like how it got here, what its purpose is, etc, etc. I don't know if this is going to tie into the Archon quest. I'd feel weird if it wasn't, just because it's like, it's like a, like, shabam, it's like, ba it's like right in the middle of the freaking, it's like right between the Academia and Port Ormos. So, um, don't know if this is a uh, world quest related, but I'm interested to see how it fares. I'll probably do what I did similarly with Avidia Forest, and I'll probably explore most of this area off stream. Um, if there's an underground section of this area, I'll leave that to like whatever could potentially be here for like an, uh, a world quest or something like that. But um, uh, this is probably where I'm going to stop the stream for today, just because I know that act two, from what I've been told, is even longer than act one. And I've already been streaming for about four hours. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it off here. Uh, I'm going to focus on my, you know, exploration and getting chest and dendroculus and all that stuff. And I'll be streaming again on Monday. So on Monday, we're going to run it back and we're going to be able to get through hopefully all of act two if i just stick solely to the archon quest but given the fact that act one took me two days or two streams to do i should say uh, i'm expecting act two to take a bit of time as well so we'll have to wait and see but um yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed i really hope you guys enjoyed the playthrough my commentary my reactions to everything port ormos has i think the most the catchiest music in the game bar none like none of the other regions even come close to how catchy and how much of a good vibe that like this region's mu like this area's music is with the port um to the point where i was just like you know it's literally just stuck on my head like stuck on the brain and i just want to listen to more of it but um but yeah everything else has been going great so far not a lot of combat and to be honest i'm not entirely upset about that you know overworld exploration will provide me with the combat that i want i know the kali event's gonna have combat focused on it as well and i'm expecting as the archon quest progresses into act three four five however many there are as the plot gets further along where conflict arises and then we get into like who the real threat is like between the um between the abyss order and the fatui and dotore i'm expecting combat will will you know arise at some given point but i as you guys all know i'm in it for the story i'm in it for the lore i'm in it for the world building so if anything this is right up my alley for what i enjoy about genshin and so i just hope you guys enjoy it as well but um but yeah that's that's gonna do it this was great and uh, we'll get into act two on monday